Hey everybody and welcome to Quickies. Today's video is actually a user request and it's a follow-up to what was already a two-part series on this channel, ATEM Auto Switch, Video Follows Audio. I've actually had a few requests for today's topic, so it's finally time to do it. Specifically, what we're going to do today is we're going to do the same auto switching with the ATEM Mini, but I'm going to show you how to drive the audio for it using a Rodecaster Pro version 1. So now that you know what the video is about, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Let's go! There's a couple of very important things to understand before we fully get into this video. The first thing is that the Rodecaster Pro version 1, even though it can make this work, it's not ideal. There's some really serious limitations with this device, which means we have to do some workarounds to make it operate the way we want it to. The second thing to know is that the auto switching software that I have running on my PC I'm not going to show you how to set that up in this video. That is already covered in depth in the first video of this series. So of course, that's gonna be linked down below. You'll need to watch that so that you understand how to set up this software. Today's video is going to focus on what we do with the Rodecaster Pro and how we route audio around through that device to make this function. Okay, really quickly, let's talk about the limitations of the Rodecaster Pro 1 and what it means for us. So this version of the console does not allow you to make submixes. A submix is a combination of your sources other than what's going out your main left right outputs. It also doesn't let you pan your sources left or right. So ideally you would think because you have four headphone outputs, you know, maybe we could pan our first microphone left and our second microphone right and send them out uh, headphone outputs one and two and they would be completely separate. You cannot do that with this console. Any of your sources that are coming in, as soon as you turn them up, they are all going out, all the headphones, and they are all going out your main left right mix. That's just the way it is. The Rodecaster Pro 2 has implemented both submixes and panning. That's actually a much better device for making this work, what we're gonna do today, but we're still gonna talk through it with this device because this is what people have been asking for. So the other thing you need to know is that your headphone output number one on the back is linked with your headphone output at the front. I'm using this one to feed part of our signal only because this is the cabling I have available today. What we're gonna talk through, you could use this or this. They're both controlled with your headphone one volume here, but they are both linked. That's just something that you need to know. The other thing you need to know is that the other way we're gonna send signal to the ATEM is by using one of our main left right outputs. You can choose which one you wanna use, um, I'm using the right to send signal. You just need to know that you are going to lose one of your left right outputs and you are going to lose headphone output number one. So you will not be able to plug a set of headphones into headphone output number one and use it the way you normally would with the Rodecaster. And if you can't live without a second speaker coming out of either your left or right, then this probably isn't gonna work very well for you. But if you are willing to live with the loss of those two things and you can live with those limitations, then you're gonna be okay. So really quickly, let's talk about what's happening with our ATEM because there's something we need to know there too. For the sake of simplicity in today's video, I'm not going to split any of my channels. And if you've watched the other video that I mentioned at the start of this one, you'll understand what I mean. So we're gonna use both microphone input one and microphone input two on the ATEM Mini to keep our signals separate. We're not gonna to try to combine anything on one cable going into one input. If you really wanna do that, you absolutely can. And if you've watched the video, you'll know how to do that and what you need to do to make that work. But I just want to keep things very simple. If you see the schematic that I've got up on screen, you'll see that we've got the front headphone jack feeding out of the Rodecaster going into mic input two on the ATEM and we're using the right main output on the Rodecaster to feed microphone input number one on the ATEM. 
So that's our setup for the ATEM. That's our limitations for the Roadcaster. And with those two things out of the way, we're now going to talk about how we're getting signal from the mixer into the A10 Mini and what that means and what you have to think about. Okay, really quickly looking at the Roadcaster Pro. The first thing you absolutely have to do to make this work is go to the settings cog, go to advanced, go to the audio tab, go to operations, and make sure that enable pre-fader listen is turned on. That has to be on or this will not work. Then you can go back home and we'll talk about what we're doing for setup. So I have two microphones in this room right now. I have my normal one on a stand and I have a handheld one. The one on the stand is feeding input number one. The one in my hand is feeding input number two. So the reason we turned on our pre-fade listen in our settings is because we're going to use the little green button at the bottom of our roadcaster here, specifically the one on channel one. That button is going to send the signal of our first microphone out through headphone one. These two headphone ports are linked. Remember that. So whatever's coming out of one is coming out of the other, and this is the volume for that output. So the only thing we're going to send out on pre-fader listen is this first channel. It's going to come out of the headphone one output and go into one of our microphone inputs on the ATEM. Whenever that ATEM input sees signal from this microphone, it will switch to camera one. Camera one is my main PC screen where you can see all the auto switching command windows running in the background. Our main left right output is where we're going to send out our microphone two signal. Whenever the other microphone input on the A10 sees signal from our main output, that will trigger a switch to camera number two. Camera number two is my Mac where you can see I've got DaVinci open or you can see I've got the ATEM software control or you can see I have the schematic of our routing. So now you know what to look for. The reason this works is because this channel is the only thing sending out of the headphone output. So the microphone input it's connected to on the ATEM will only ever see this signal meaning that anything triggering that is only ever going to switch to camera one. However, if we bring this one up, now that signal coming from the handheld microphone will trigger a change to camera two. Now, if you're actually using this microphone for part of your podcast or your recording, then you're going to want to turn that up too. Unfortunately, that means this signal is now going out pre-fade listen to the first input on ATEM, and it's also going out the main left right to the second input on ATEM. But with these two signals, they're cumulative, meaning that their two signals together will get really loud and only ever trigger camera two. If this person's speaking by themselves, it's very likely that it's going to be overridden by the pre-fader listen. And we'll try to make that a definitive action by keeping this volume a little bit lower. So because it's lower on the main left right, it's less likely to trigger camera two than it is to trigger camera one through the pre-fade listen. However, this being higher and these two being cumulative, they should trigger camera two. So let's try it. Remember, camera one is the PC, camera two is the Mac, so I'm going to speak into mic one to trigger camera one and then speak into the other mic to trigger the other camera. So check, 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 one, two, check, one, two. There's camera one, my PC. Check, 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 check. There's camera two, my Mac. So we know it's working. You just have to be aware that this is a finicky setup because we are not using a system that lets us split signals or pan signals left, right. Any signal you have here in your main faders, all of this will go out your headphones and your main left right, always. That's just the way this system works. The only way to isolate something on a single input is, or sorry, on a single output is to turn on pre-fader listen. Anything I turned on now, pre-fader listen, would go out headphone one. Obviously, we only want to use this one because we only want to trigger one camera with it. But anything you add to the main left-right mix, 
that will trigger camera two. All of this will add together. So if multiple signals are happening, that will trigger camera two. It's not ideal. I realize it's not ideal, but this is the best we can get out of this system. The other way to, to isolate this, if you really want to, is you could leave this down because pre-fade or listen means the signal is sending regardless of where this channel fader is. So if it's down, the microphone will still work to trigger the camera. Check, 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 one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two. It's always going to trigger camera one. Check, 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 one, two. There's camera two. But this microphone is going to trigger camera one, even though the fader's down. So if you really wanted to, you could have another microphone on one of your guests or a lav mic or something and keep this fader off. And then the only thing it will ever do is trigger the pre-fader listen. Without the fader being up, it will never add to camera two. So then you could use these other sources to only be your camera two trigger. That's the way it works with this system. It's limited, I know, I apologize. There's nothing I can do. That is an inherent limitation of the Rodecaster. The last thing I just wanna to touch on again uh, to reiterate is how finicky the volumes are. So because of the way we're doing this, keep in mind that this first knob here, that controls the volume going out of your headphone output number one. This here controls the volume going out your main left right. You will have to find a balance between these two so that you have a smooth cut on your cameras. The other thing you can do is look in your actual ATEM software control and come to the audio tab and you can adjust the fader levels here or the actual input gain of your two microphone channels. So with these controls in the ATEM software, with these controls and with these, you should be able to find a balance that works. It will take some testing. It's not going to be an instant win, but if you spend time to actually figure it out and smooth out your operation, you should find that it works with minimal headaches. Well, friends, there you go. A limited but functional way to make the Rodecaster Pro 1 trigger your ATEM auto switching. If I can get my hands on a Rodecaster Pro 2 in the next little while, I'm going to do this same video showing the methods with that console so you can compare and see how the two devices stack up against each other. Not just for this, but uh, in general as a functional mixing console. Anyway, I hope this video is interesting, educational, entertaining. If it was any of those three things, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The usual nonsense. Or you check us out on Patreon. Or down below, you can even join this channel through YouTube. Any of those things really, really help out. And until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies. Bye, everybody.